Well, Walnut Ink. You've heard about it. You've seen it in stores or not. I don't know. This is really crappy paper. Let's see if I can find a really crappy pen. Well, I'm not going to use the crappy pen. I will use a this one. Is this going to screw it up? Let me use a pen that's already pre-screwed up. Oh, this has iridium on it. One of these does not have iridium. Just trying to find some pen that I can scribble with where I don't have to worry about it. There we go. Here, this one is missing its iridium. And I have no idea what was in it before. But my friend Johnny Blazet was an urban sketcher gave me a bottle of walnut ink and I thought well I just saw it here I'll see what happens let me just <clears throat> use let me just use a brush that is that is clear of debris just to see what sort of color this is so I presume Johnny makes this out of walnuts and boils it or cooks it or deep freezes it or whatever one does to make walnut ink turn into ink. Walnuts turn into ink. It's kind of a nice color as far as brown goes. What can brown do for you? I honestly don't know whether it's um, waterproof or anything. I have no idea about that. I could look it up. I could text him. I could find out from the actual cook. What I've done is my calligraphy business has essentially gone extinct. I am not really getting any jobs to, to calligraph envelopes. So I'm figuring out, you know, do I really need all of this desk area to be used for my calligraphic purposes? Should I just do drawings? Shall I plan to do drawings and watercolors and other such things here rather than calligraphic work? Of course, the minute I change my desk to be for watercolors I'm going to get someone that wants me to do calligraphy so I'm not going to alter it that much but I think I will simplify my life as much as I can with respect to ink because I don't need 50 half bottles of ink. And all of my inks are at this point so diluted that I don't even know. This says purple. Purple. It's in a brown Waterman ink bottle. What does this say? Certainly isn't 
black ink. What color ink is this? It's it's watered down that color. Do I need to ever do anything with that color ink? Do you think? Should I just throw this bottle out? I just dipped it. And of course, this had blue ink or something in it. What is in this bottle? This is a broken bottle. Come on. God bless. This looks purple. Should I just put the purple ink with the purple ink? Call it a day. Hmm, this smells very different though. It's very dark purple. But this is broken. So it seems to me I can at least get rid of this bottle. This looks bad. Sludgy. Okay. Purple. This. Something reserve ink. Throw that bottle away. So I've got this bottle now has purple-ishness in it. Can we say that? Purple-ishness? Is that a perfectly good way to refer to this color? <laughs> that doesn't look very purple to me. No, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Should I just throw this bottle out before it turns into something nasty? Tell you what, we're just going to mix this sink with that. And we're just going to call this it's sort of purple-y. But I think there's there's certain colors I'm making here with my ink that I would never ever think of actually. See now here's another broken bottle cap. What does this say blue? This is Carter's Midnight Blue. I know that there's people in the world right now that are spinning in their graves. This is really dark ink. Whatever was in this, I'm sure is a toxic chemical. Which might bleed a little bit. I don't know. Just leave it the way it is. Purple. Okay, we'll keep this bottle. This is what is this? Panache fountain pen ink. Exceptionally black. Shall we see if if this fits in the exceptional does seem pretty black. Now is this good for fountain pens or not? It says fountain pen ink right there on it. So I will assume that that is correct. Okay, mocha. I don't like these bottles very much, but Schaefer script. 
I think this is supposed to be black, but the last black I bought from them, Schaefer was really bleedy. And I did not like it. It worked okay. I mean, not for calligraphy. It worked okay for drawing. So, okay, this is empty. This is empty. This is has a broken cap. What color was this again? Oh, this was my walnut ink. Was this my walnut ink? This is my walnut ink. I have to no. Is this my walnut ink? This is my walnut ink. I think. <laughs> Do I have to watch my reruns again? This was that nasty reddish ink. The anemic red ink. That's equally anemic. Okay, now, are there any other ink bottles here? No. So my ink is going to go in the bottom drawer over here. This is black, I think. This is midnight blue. Now this, I have lots, I think, of this. Which is true. You know, it would be nice if I had a piece of paper that I could trust. Is there such a thing as a piece of paper I can actually trust to work? Give me a white piece of paper. No. I don't want glossy. This is glossy, which I just ruined by getting it full of ink. Okay, here's a white piece of paper. It's supposed to be white. Midnight blue. Okay, that's the color. I would call that Payne's Gray. That's what I would call that color. Now, this is some purple ink in it from when I just put it in the thing. And this is kind of a nice color. It's watered down gray, blue, blue-gray, Carter blue. I've got gallons of that stuff. Black, I think that's black. This is walnut, I'm gonna label that. This is purple, which is that, is that purple? Would you call that purple? I don't think so. Do I, is this puce? Is that what we're gonna call it? Pink, rose, do we call it rose? It's going to be a different color when it's on this kind of paper. Walnut. W-A-L-N-U-T. Walnut. This is why I can't have pretty things. <laughs> because I, I'm such a clusterfuck. Now, why do I, why would I even keep this ink? Is there some reason why I would even want this ink on my desk or in a drawer? Could you do the math on that? Just tell me. No, throw it away, Peter. Throw it away. Empty. Okay, now I don't have any ink on my desk. No, I do have, I do have inks. For example, let's say this was the ugliest color ink that ever was. Well, this 
is a perfectly good color to use to test out to see if a pen is working or not. You know, I don't have to use expensive brand new out of the bottle Waterman's ink for that. I can use faded nasty ink just to see if the ink is flowing. You know, there might be some slight difference between a watered down ink and a real ink when you're testing out a pen. If you're testing out color and paper and all that other kind of stuff, that's another kettle of fish. But most of the time when I'm dealing with pens, I'm just trying to see, okay, I like this nib or I don't like this nib. And I can use awful color colors for those. I don't need I don't need the colors to be pretty. Okay, I've thrown out two bottles so far. I've labeled this one. Label the top. So it says walnut. Walnut. And will I use the walnut ink? Maybe. I'm not going to say no. So I've got three bottles of ink. Let's see what else can I get What color is... Oh. This was in a kind of a fancy ink bottle which um, looked like it held salad dressing and had a little marble that I moved to this bottle. Okay, these are all inks that are for I've got a lot of ink that is acrylic paint that comes in an ink bottle that I'm using for. Okay, this is supposed to be ruby ink. Well, clearly, this is not ruby ink. It's Parker ink of some sort. I don't know what color it's supposed to be. Whatever it's supposed to be, this is the color it is. Here I'm drawing on very fancy, shiny photo paper, which is kind of neat because it sticks and smears and Does everything that you want it not to do. A piece of paper is nuts. You know, you don't want a piece of paper to do what I'm doing, but that's okay. This is my house. I can do what I want. Okay, so this is going to go here. Okay. Light blue gray. This says. Should we see if it is correct? I guess so. Close enough. But I, I think what I want to do is to just. I'm, I'm going to try to start using up bottles of ink, and I don't care what color I'm going to use. I just want them out of my life. It's so rare that I get a get a mood to get rid of stuff, and when I'm in that mood, I should embrace it and just do everything I can to make it make it happen.
light blue gray using a pilot parallel pen here. Never quite understood how, how to get these pens to do what I want them to do. Maybe because I don't do that kind of lettering. But I think it would be fun to figure out a way to make some sort of art with this kind of stuff. Okay, I can throw these out right over here to the trash. Oops, wrong. I've got a lot of really awful watered down ink that is vaguely reddish in color. Let's see what's in this Mont Blanc ink bottle. Well, it might be black ish enough to work in a fountain pen. This is, this is really crappy watercolor paper that I thought would be good for watercolor and it's really bad paper. You can watch it decay or acidify or whatever it's doing. Before your very eyes, it's an ugly color. This is kind of a nice color. Carter blue. Both these bottles say Carter blue, so I'm going to put them both in one. Throw the other bottle out. I probably shouldn't throw them out. They may come in handy. Purple. I already have purple. And this is really purple. Dark blue. I used to like these Omos bottles. This is pretty red. I'll put that over here. Carter blue. This seems pretty blue. What color is this? This is that blue gray that I just. It's blue gray. Me. I'm already a mess. Why am I even using this thing? Pilot. Ball. Okay, now let's see what I'm going to do now that I've found myself.
This is very fancy, expensive paper. This sheet of paper was bigger, but it probably cost five bucks. Arches, no, Artistico. Fabriano. This piece is probably a dollar, it's part of it. So let's just see how well a dollar, a piece of paper that costs a dollar rut works. Just for shits and giggles. Okay, it doesn't look like it's bleeding. Yep, well that's feathering and bleeding right away, so that proves that. But it is watercolor paper, so it's maybe supposed to do that. Well, since I've started this, let's turn it into something. I don't know what kind of pen this is. It's a European pen body of some sort, which I put a, I can't remember what kind of nib I put in it. Find out. It's a warranted nib. Warranted number four. So it's a fancy dame out for a walk. Boobs, hands, hairdo, parasol. Nose, lipstick, fingernails. Else. Okay, let's turn this into a masterpiece. It already is a masterpiece, but let's let's continue Mas masterpiece piecing it. So let's get a nice piece of this is a sumi brush. Well, let's go all out. Sumi brush and dirty water. What do you think? Add to shopping cart? <laughs> In a rainstorm. In addition to walking down Fifth Avenue, she's walking down Fifth Avenue in a rainstorm. Snowstorm. Well, I think that's, I think that's, that's about ready to be added to the shopping cart. What do you think? Beautiful. Should I, should I make her, her lips red? I think it's implied. Let's give her some eyelashes here though. I think it's implied. Her red lipstick. Add to shopping cart? What do you think, folks? I don't have all day. Click now. If you're one of the first 10 callers, you'll get a special offer. This was kind of fun. Should I do that again? Let's try a different piece of paper. I don't know what kind of paper this is, but we'll see. Okay. Dame Dat walking down the street. Here I'll do a um, 
This is going to be a sumo wrestler. Rather roundish, isn't he? Who was that Hawaiian guy that was about a thousand pounds that played the ukulele? What was his name? That's who I'm drawing. Here's his ukulele. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue. Do 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 little tiny toes. Do 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 do. Okay, how do I turn this into a masterpiece? Israel, is that his first name? Israel, I think. Skies are blue. There. You can buy them both. Here is Nozzi singing. And Nozzi's playing. That's where you'll find me Somewhere over the rainbow Bluebirds fly Why, oh, why can't I? Right? Add the shopping cart. Anyway, I've got like five million pieces of paper in my house, and I think I could do at least one million drawings, don't you think? They might not be as beautiful as this one, but I think I I should be able to come up with some. What's in here? rule. You have to have one of these in your studio. And if you don't have one, I've got many. What is this? This is a piece of wood. Here's another proportional rule. This one, unfortunately, has lost its Mojo. Um, a friend of mine had borrowed it and it ended up breaking. He slammed it in a into a drawer and it unfortunately one of the tips broke off so I had to and the little knurling thing also broke somehow so I had to um, it It'll work, but it won't work with with the precision that the other one had. You could make it work with that precision, but it's harder to make it go. Ouch. 
you know, these things that have points on them, they're sharp. This is neat, this, this one that looks kind of pregnant. It has the pen, you can rotate this and use the ruling pen or rotate it back and use the pencil. It's not as exact. There's a little wiggle room up here, so it'll give you a false sense of, or no sense of security. Ouch. This one, you know, these little things here, this is what you put the lead into. And then you put that in here somehow. That little added feature is almost always missing on the, the ones that you that have that. I really like I like drop compasses. This is, if I can get the. <sighs> These are drop compasses. This is meant to bring it over to your drawing. You set this to the diameter that you want. Using this little set screw. And then you bring it over to your drawing and you find the point because you know the if this weren't movable it would be really hard for you to see what the hell you were doing so you find the point and then you drop this down and with your thumb you turn the knurled knob of course you're not seeing any of this thank you very much Pierre gustafson for you drop this down and then you rotate it like this while holding this in place. And um, for making really tiny, tiny circles, whereas the other ones for making tiny circles uh, are a little less hard to, a little less easy to hold and rotate. Here, this would make tiny circles, but you sort of have to move your hand more because this top part is moving. So, hence the The, the purpose of the drop compass. This is neat. This one is, you can make concentric circles more easily with this by I don't know if that's, actually that's not the purpose, but it's a way of this geared thing and this screw here makes it easier for you to make subtle changes because if you were just using your hands to make them you'd always go end up pushing it too far in or pulling it too far out and this allows you to be a little bit more accurate when you're when you're making a circle these are just those are just those things Part of a stylographic pen. This, no, I thought that was something else. Never mind.
these are proportional rules I showed you already. Here's another drop compass. Ouch. They're they're sharp. Drop compasses. Let me just sort these out. Let me put the drop compasses in one spot. This looks like it's supposed to be a drop compass. I'm going to call it a drop compass. You know, these are these things that are just happen to be loose in a drawer. I have sets that are complete. So don't think that this is it. This is for making a really big circle. Another drop compass here. This is neat. This thing right here, this is a this is a compass. How does it work, you ask? Well, this is how it works. Let's see if I remember. You take off the cap. Oh, it's a ruler. It's a ruler as well as a compass. As well as a compass. Isn't that clever? It's a, it's a ruler with an app. And it has a pencil sharpener over here. And a pen there. <laughs> so everything that you want it to be. It has a pen, a ruler, and a compass. So cute. Oh, it's only part of something. Here's another, another one of these. This is just darling. This one right here. It's one of these. This is this one. One should make earrings out of these. If I were a dame, would I wear earrings like that? I guess you don't have to be a dame to wear earrings. Okay, here's another. Look at this one. This is neat. If I can take it apart, there's a pencil in there. So it's a it's a divider plus a compass. But in order to get the compass out, there we go. See, there's the pencil. Look at that. 
This is really cool. Am I the only person that likes this shit? Write your answers below. I didn't even know that did that. I was entirely unaware. Measures how long something is on a map. And you turn it into, check your scale and you figure it out. And you, and you know. So all of these proportional compasses, uh, uh, dividers, these all can go in one spot. Where are they going? Where's where's the spot for these going to be? Do you think somewhere where I can use them as a weapon if I'm suddenly accosted? Did they fit in here? Look at that! They all fit right there. Okay. This one I probably would use more than not. More likely than not. These I will put there. These I will put there. I'm going to just, I'm going to really, I know I'm going to hurt myself on this thing. So I'm going to put these back where they were. Last chance. Operators are standing by. Guy. That guy that's dead now that played the ukulele and the Grand Dame Deluxe walking down the street. Phones are waiting. Operators are waiting. This is broken. I realized it was broken yesterday when I tried to write with it. Bye.